In this video, I will show you how to edit like Mr. Beast and we'll do some specific effects, which he uses a lot. I'm gonna use Premiere Pro, but I'm also gonna use After Effects for most of it. And before I begin, if you want to become a pro editor, but also earn two to 5K a month as an editor, then do join the Social Creator Club Pro. Link is in the description and you will also see specifically what's in it. And trust me, there's some crazy stuff. So do check that out. Now let's jump into it. So basically there's a couple effects that I want to recreate. First of all, this highlight effect, this you see a lot in his videos then it zooms out into this circle we're also going to recreate that then we have this days counter of course mr beast also uses a lot of these counters and then this really cool text effect we're also going to recreate that so let's start with the highlight effect first and we can actually just create this in premiere pro quite easily by going into the pen tool and then let's say we want to highlight this bookcase in the bottom. So we're just going to draw with the pen tool and we're just going to create a basic shape and make sure that when you set a point, you hold your mouse down to basically make it a bit more rounded, something like this. It will make it a bit more natural. And as you can see, we now have a gray layer. <laughs> I don't want that. So I'm going to change this fill to like maybe like a yellowish, something like this. There we go, press OK. Now, if you don't see this panel, you might need to update your Premiere Pro or you can also go to the left and open your shape options here. Now, this is still really harsh, so I'm just gonna go to effects and I'm gonna add a Gaussian blur. You can just double click, it will add it. Then increase the blurriness by a lot. I would say around 50 will do. And now that we're changing this anyway, we can also go to the opacity blend mode and change this to overlay. But you can also use soft light, hard light or screen. This depends a bit on your footage, so just test it out. In my case, I'm just gonna use overlay. Now to animate it in and out, I'm just gonna make sure the selection tool is selected. I'm gonna right click on my layer and apply default transition. This will basically make sure that it will fade in. Let's zoom in a bit by holding alt and scrolling and let's make this really short something like this so we'll fade in as you can see and then of course we have to fade it out by just dragging this from the right to the left and right clicking apply default transition also making this really small now if you want it to flash which can be a cool effect you can just do that by holding command or control on windows and then clicking on this line so we'll add some points and for example we can add a couple of points here and there so we have three points now and then you just drag the middle point down a bit maybe to something like 50 basically this will make it go less bright we'll just turn the opacity down a bit and it will go up again that's cool so that's the highlight effect which you can use in a lot of videos now let's create this really cool circle just click and hold your mouse down on the rectangle tool and change it to the ellipse then we can just draw a circle something like this and i'm gonna turn off the fill i'm gonna turn on the stroke click on the stroke and set this to blue and then maybe like a light bluish something like this press ok increase the stroke by a lot let's set it to something like 18 and the first thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna add a gaussian blur to this so basically make sure that it's a bit more soft as you can see because it's a bit too harsh otherwise maybe something like this it's cool and then i'm gonna add a vr glow just double click make sure the luma threshold is set to low now it looks really ugly we just need to make sure that this vr glow is below the gaussian blur so let's move that down there we go then open the vr glow and let's increase the glow brightness by a lot and as you can see we'll really add a really cool effect and you can even duplicate this vr glow command c on mac or Control c on windows and then of course pasting it command v Control v now it will be really harsh uh, but of course now we can control the radius a bit or the glow brightness to make it a bit less harsh that's cool and now lastly i'm gonna add a turbulent displace just double click so it will be added it will give this warning and again we need to drag this down below all of our effects and above our shape and as you can see, it will give this really cool effect. We can just open it. And basically this will make it a bit more organic. So I'm gonna decrease the size by a lot, maybe to 10 and the amount to 25. And then we can even animate it by animating the evolution. So we can set a keyframe going a bit further and then setting this to 50 or maybe even 200. As you can see, there's movement in it now. That's really cool. 
Now, of course, we want to also make sure that it's at the same position. And this is the same thing with the highlight effect. And the easiest to do this is to just set a keyframe on the vector motion or animate the motion position. And this is nothing crazy. We can just set a keyframe for the position going a bit further and then making sure that this is still on the same spot. Cool. Now going back to the example, we now have this really cool text animation. And unfortunately, this is just really hard to do in Premiere. So for this, I would just create this in After Effects. And how I always like to do this is to just make a shape or a text, it doesn't really matter. For example, if we do text, we can just click here and type day counter. And then we can already align it a bit on where we want it. For example, maybe just this part. So just drag this back, there we go. And then right click, replace with After Effects composition. Save the project and this new composition will open with exactly the time and with our ugly text. And we can just, of course, delete this. We don't need it. Now for the counter, we can literally just search counter and there will be a counter countdown. And this is actually perfect for what we want to create. So just double click on this, press U to see your keyframes. As you can see, you have an animate value here. I'm just gonna turn that off and let's change some settings. So first of all, 10 times the value multiplier, set that to one. The pad zeros, I'm gonna change to zero. There we go. Number format is perfectly fine. Show original text, I'm gonna set it to after numbers. Now we're gonna change a couple of settings. First of all, the 10 times value multiplier, we're gonna set to one. The pad zeros, we're gonna set to two. And then the show original text, I'm gonna set it to after numbers. Now I'm gonna double click on this T icon to basically type our text. And I'm just gonna type in days, just like that. And also add a space between it. And now we can animate it. So as you can see, if we change the animate value, it will change the value. Uh, let's set it to zero. Let's click on the keyframe icon and let's go to the end around here and set it to 100. So it will count up as you can see. And then when it's at 100, it won't show it because we need to change the pad zeros here. So I'm just gonna go one frame before this, set a keyframe for the pad zeros, go one further and set it to three. And now it should work as you can see, it will count up and change to 100. Now to change the font and basically the style of this, we can of course just go into this right panel in the text panel, set it to all caps, for example, set it to a really thick font, and then adding some effects like right clicking on the text layer, going to layer styles. Now, of course, we can add a outer stroke, so adding a stroke, but we can also add a layer styles bevel and emboss. And of course, we need to adjust this a bit, but in my opinion, uh, without the bevel and emboss, if we just use the stroke, we should be able to get away with it. So first go into the bevel and emboss and set it to a outer bevel, maybe changing the depth a bit. Then I'm gonna click on toggle transparency grid to see the background. And I'm gonna change the stroke to black or like a dark grayish, something like this, that works. I'm also increasing the size by a lot. And then we probably have to increase the stroke size a bit. And as you can see, we're getting somewhere. Let's move this down by going to the selection tool, pressing V, and let's move this a bit to here. Now you can actually also add a glow to this. So just adding a glow in the effects panel and then double clicking. Now that's really cool. Basically at the end, I also want some effects over it. So what I'm gonna do is once it's at 100, I'm gonna change the anchor point in the center. And you do that by going to the pen behind tool and then just moving this, holding command or control on windows and then it will be snapping. And then we can go to S for scale, set a keyframe and let's just move it back a bit and let's move this out a bit maybe. So it goes from 100 to something like 105, dragging this out and then it goes back to 100 again. So basically once it hits 100, it will bounce. And of course we can select this and hit F9 or right click keyframe assistance, easy ease. That will make it a bit more smooth. And then we can also change the color once it hits 100 days. And the easiest way to do this is to go into the text, then click on animate, fill color, and just set it on RGB. And then I'm just gonna click on this. I'm gonna set it to white first, click on the keyframe icon, and then let's move it a bit further. And I'm gonna make it red-ish, maybe something like this. Okay, and basically what I'm gonna do is drag this keyframe out now. So it will go from white to red, 
And then once it's there, I'm just gonna copy this first keyframe over, paste it, it will turn back to white. Now, of course, you can add a glow over this and stylize it even a bit better, but this is already a really cool effect, as you can see. Now, going to toggle switches mode, we can also enable motion blur that will really sell the effect also between the numbers, as you can see, but also once it's at 100 days, it will basically bounce a bit. And what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna go to the effects and presets, and I'm gonna add a CC light sweep to this, generate CC light sweep. And then I'm just gonna animate the center. So hold shift and just drag this first value to the left, set a keyframe, go a bit further and set it to the right. There we go. I'm gonna increase the sweep intensity a bit to something like 70. I'm gonna press U to see our keyframes. And as you can see here, the CC light sweep is here. I'm just gonna drag it out a bit so it just takes a bit more time and it also makes it a bit more smooth. Cool, so now, so now we have our count up, changes into a different color, a light sweep, and once it's 100, it will change back to white. Now we do have to animate it in, but this is with a simple position keyframe. So we can just press P for position, setting a keyframe. And to be honest, this composition length is a bit short. I might increase the length a bit. So go to composition, composition settings. As you can see here, here, you have the duration at the bottom and I'm gonna set that to three seconds. So we just have a bit more room to play with. Let's zoom out, let's drag this out. And then what you can even do is just press U to see all of our keyframes, select the last part of it and just drag this out a bit. So it's a bit more smooth and there's a bit more time to to basically watch what is going on. This is already way better. Now for the in animation, I'm just gonna press P for position. I'm gonna set a keyframe and I'm gonna drag this out a bit. I'm gonna move it to the bottom, something like this. And then of course you can easy ease this by right clicking and then easy ease or hitting F9. And we can even go into the graph editor and make this a bit more smooth, something like this. So it basically pops up, there we go. And of course, we're gonna also at the end, make it go down again. So just drag it down, there we go. Same thing, easy ease it by hitting F9 and graph editor, just selecting the first one this time and dragging that, and dragging that to the right, there we go, perfect. Exactly how I wanted, really cool animation. Now for this text effect, we actually need After Effects again. Let's say we want it here in this scene. I'm just gonna go to the razor tool and I'm just gonna click on the footage, go a bit further and then click on the footage here. And basically I want to make sure that this part ends up in After Effects and I do that by just selecting it, right clicking, replace with After Effects composition. Now I'm just gonna go to the text tool. I'm gonna type Hugo by just clicking on the background go let's move this a bit now that we have our text on the right i'm gonna just select stroke i'm gonna set it to maybe something like three pixels go to effects and presets and i'm gonna add a glow to this so just double click on glow then change the glow colors to a and b colors and we can change the color a to maybe something like a bluish type of color something like this press ok then let's add the glow intensity and the glow radius. I'm also gonna change the A and B midpoint to 100%. And this is way too much, but now we can dial it down a bit by just increasing maybe the radius a bit more and then decreasing the glow intensity by a lot. I would say around one and a half should be fine. There we go. That's really cool. I like that. Of course, you can also use deep glow, but this should work. Now for the lines, I'm just gonna add a new layer. So layer, new, solid, press okay. And I'm gonna go to the effects and presets and I'm gonna add a grid to this. Generate the grid, just double click. And then the color, I'm gonna make it black. Okay, now I'm just gonna go to this corner value and the first one I'm gonna drag out by a lot. So we just have basically straight lines and no vertical lines. Now I also need to change the anchor. As you can see, there's still a line in the middle. I want that gone. So let's move this to the left. There we go. So that's gone too. And now I want these lines to be smaller. So I'm just gonna go to the second value of the corner and just moving this down by a lot. Something like this. And then we can also change the border size to four. And we can even go into the feather and changing the height to one. Let's make them even a bit more small, something like this. And then of course we can dial down the opacity a bit 
to maybe 40%. That's cool. But as you can see, it's now on the whole image. And this is actually quite a cool effect that you can use. It's almost like a bit of an old TV effect. Now, I, I want it, of course, only on this text. So we can just go to toggle switches modes, track mat, and change this to Hugo. Now we do have to turn Hugo back on. And as you can see, now the lines are only on this text and it's a really cool effect. Now in the example, this text is also tracked to the person and we can even do that by just going to the layer, like the bottom layer and then going to layer new, null object. Then we'll go to the survive layer back again and go to window tracker. We'll see this window pop up. We can now do track motion and you will see this point and we can just move this to a point which we want to track. But let's just see what's visible the whole way around. I think actually the word Hugo on his shirt is visible. So let's move this something like this and then let's track it by clicking this analyze forward button and as you can see it tracked it perfectly i'm really happy with this so now i can change the target so click edit target click layer change this to null okay so this will make sure that this data when we click apply will be applied to this null that we just created click apply press ok now nothing has really changed basically all the data of this tracking is now on this null and what we now can say is like, hey, After Effects, make sure to take the position movement from the null and apply it to the text. And we do that by parenting. And you do this by just clicking on this parent pick whip and just dragging this. And the other way to do this is to click on this drop down menu and selecting the null. Now, the nice thing about doing it like this is that we can still move the text around if we want to. Basically, it will just use the same movement as the null, as you can see, but we can still decide if we want to change this positioning here like that or we can even go into toggle switches modes make it 3d press r for rotation and we can even rotate it a bit in 3d space so it's almost like floating there as you can see it's a really cool effect and then you get something like this and again if you want to become a pro editor then do join the social creator club pro there's literally over 40 hours of lessons on how to become a better editor but also on how to sell your craft where to find your first client and to scale from there not only that there's also interviews with editors from ali abdal iman gaji and several others again link is in the description thanks of course for watching this video and being subscribed to this channel and of course thanks for all the support you're giving me then i'll see you next time thanks for watching bye